Last week, Yandex got hit with one of the largest DDoS attacks the world has ever seen, with peak traffic going as high as 22 million requests per second. And for a while, people's abilities to get sauce on important images and videos was disrupted. Now, in case you didn't know, Yandex is the fifth most popular search engine in the world. It's also the go-to search engine for about 60% of internet users in Russia because Russians are far too based to use something like Google. And it's also used by many people in the rest of the world for its reverse image search feature, which tends to be better at finding the sauce on images compared to Google, Bing, or even Tenai, which is specifically made for reverse image searching, but they just cannot compete to the superior Slavic technology that is built into Yandex. Now, luckily, the Russians do have a way to deal with this kind of thing. They have a DDoS mitigation service of their own over at Crater Labs. So Russian internet users were not denied their search queries and the sauce boss Yandex was back up and running for the rest of the world in absolutely no time, barely even noticed the attack. But the real worry here is the botnet that was used for the attack, which is quickly becoming one of the largest known botnets in history. It's called Maris, which I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, that is a Latvian word, which means plague, like the bubonic plague. Uh, and the name is really fitting because unless you have a sophisticated DDoS mitigation service like the one here at Crater Labs, then your service is going to be plagued with outages. 22 million requests per second is a lot, like a lot, a lot. To put that in perspective, Google, the most widely used search engine in the world, they get about 63,000 search queries every second. And to handle all of those search queries, Google is using hundreds of thousands of servers with multiple enterprise grade fiber connections at each site, giving them multiple petabytes of bandwidth across all of their sites so that they can run all of their different services. So you can imagine what this botnet could do to some business site running on a VPS with just a gigabit connection. This last attack was the most significant one that's been done on Yandex in a while, which is pretty much the Russian version of Google. Uh, so most individual businesses are not going to have the kind of bandwidth that these guys have. If we take a look at the details of the attack from Crater's blog, we can see that part of the reason that this botnet is so dangerous is because this Maris botnet is constructed a little bit differently. It's not like most traditional botnets that mostly consist of easy to compromise Internet of Things devices or end users PCs or web servers but instead it is mostly consisting of network devices like routers and switches, devices that are connected via ethernet. So they don't have to deal with the limitations that Wi-Fi would impose like weak signal strength or interference when bombarding a victim with their packets. Uh, and after analyzing the most recent attack that created up to 22 million requests per second, it appears that this was produced by about 56,000 attacking hosts. But the full size of the botnet is expected to be much higher. It's probably about 200,000 devices or more because they noticed that attacking hosts were rotated in and out of use. Uh, now we do have some more specific confirmed features about the Maris botnet uh, for this actual DDoS attack. The devices are using HTTP pipelining, which allows many HTTP requests to be sent over a single TCP connection without waiting for the corresponding responses. So they're just firing off a bunch of requests and they don't care what the response is. Uh, they're making the requests themselves with RPS or application layer DDoS attacks instead of using reflected or amplified DDoS attacks. Uh, now, this RPS is a very powerful technique when you have so many thousands of devices to use it because it is much harder to differentiate those kinds of requests from legitimate ones, and thus it's much harder to filter them out, causing longer outages or potentially more severe outages for the victim. Uh, this is the same kind of technique that was used in the Mirai botnet 
back in 2016, which was the most severe botnet in terms of causing outages at that time. And the attacking devices also tend to have ports 5678 and 2000 opened and are using SOX 4. This, along with the OS fingerprinting results of the devices that are making the request, points to the majority of compromised devices being made by Microtik, which is a Latvian company that makes mid-range affordable network equipment. Um, now, as of right now, it is unknown exactly what vulnerability on these devices is causing them to get hacked uh, and then used in a botnet. But if I had to guess from the breakdown of the router OS versions that were discovered on the devices used in the attack, uh, I would say not updating the OS or its configuration file looks like the main problem. Uh, we can see here that only about 1.4% of devices are running the latest stable version of router OS. Everyone else is using an older version. Uh, now, this is still significant, that 1.4%, because obviously we're talking about hundreds of thousands of devices, so that could still be thousands of these actually up-to-date microtech devices. Uh, so some additional mitigation is clearly needed by the admins to protect those devices. Like, if they were compromised in the past, then it isn't going to be good enough to just update the operating system. I mean, clearly it's not good enough since 1.4% are using the latest OS. Uh, they should also be changing their passwords to log into the router because if a hacker has that, then he doesn't even need a backdoor. He doesn't even need a real vulnerability. Uh, he can just log in through the front door and probably won't even set off an intrusion detection either. And here you can see a timestamp of the amount of requests that Yandex has been receiving. Uh, so you can see, like normally they're not getting a whole lot of requests per second. Um, you know, makes sense since even if Google is getting like 63 or 65,000 requests per second, uh, and you know, they're globally the most popular search engine, you wouldn't expect Yandex to get as much. They're um, like number, number five on the world scale. But then you see this massive spike uh, of them getting flooded with uh, DDoS attacks. And so this initial one is probably where they were able to uh, block some of the devices, like blacklist them. And then here it looks like the botnet owner rotated in uh, more devices and, and kept trying to put more and more uh, different ones in as they were getting blocked to keep the pressure onto Yandex uh, for a longer amount of time. We also have this world map of where the devices are. So the darker color indicates more devices detected. So it looks like the majority of them are in the United States as well as China. Uh, and then it looks like there's a lot in Brazil as well. Now, this article does mention that not all of these are necessarily vulnerable micro tick devices. It's basically all devices that have ports 2000 opened as a bandwidth test server and TCP port 5678 opened for the Microtik neighbor discovery protocol, which is a common trait amongst the compromised devices uh, because normally they serve that discovery protocol over UDP. So the open TCP port must be some kind of disguise that the botnet owner is using to maybe fool the not so attentive admins into thinking that everything is hunky-dory with the configuration when in fact the devices have been and compromise. Uh, and then we have a percentage breakdown of where the devices are. So over 42% of them are in the US, about 19% in China, and almost 3% are in Brazil. And then we have further explanations down here of the methods that are used to identify these as the compromised micro tick devices. Uh, like there's the unique reply that you get on port 2000 uh, from these router OS devices. And then we have a breakdown of what countries these uh, devices from the last attack were attacking from. Uh, and what I find interesting here is that the devices in uh, the U.S. and China, let me see if I can uh, zoom this in a bit for you to see uh, better because it's not very dark text, but the United States, it looks like uh, those devices used in the last attack only made up about 3.3% of the attacking devices, and the ones from China were only 2.5% 
of the attacking devices. We know that only a small part of the suspected full botnet was used, so maybe the US and China networks are like sleeping giants, since those countries obviously have a very huge amount of bandwidth compared to many other countries. Uh, maybe there's also a large percentage of them that are grouped around undersea cables located in New Jersey or California, because that, that tends to be where our bandwidth is concentrated. Like in the US, uh, we have a lot of rural territory, like Midwestern territory, where uh, our internet connections are not very good, but typically on the East Coast, again, specifically around like New York, New Jersey, and uh, West Coast in California, that's where our internet tends to be really, really fast. Uh, so maybe they're just holding back uh, those uh, servers or those routers rather that are in US and China for a larger attack that they're going to do later. Uh, now let's talk about the ways that we can mitigate this because there are a number of things that uh, can be done and are being done. So first there is uh, an official statement on the uh, Microtech forums about this, about how to mitigate the problem. Right now, they haven't found any vulnerabilities in the current version of router OS. And so far, the devices that are part of this botnet seem to be the same ones that were compromised back in 2018 when router OS did have a vulnerability that was patched in newer versions. And they go on to say that people should update their devices to the latest stable version and change the passwords used to administer the routers, delete any unknown scripts that are present on the devices and confirm that their firewalls are set up to block remote access to unknown parties. And Crater also made um, this tool to check if a particular IP address is part of the Maris botnet. So you can just input whatever IP address here and they will tell you if they suspect it to be part of this botnet or not. Uh, so if you have a service that gets targeted by some sort of DDoS attack, then you can just see if those IPs are part of this and then blacklist those IP addresses since they aren't being spoofed to try and uh, avoid detection. Uh, and then that way you can avoid outages without interrupting the traffic of your customers.